Hello there and welcome to Lake Update. To ensure that the Colorado River can remain a lifeline for 40 million people, the federal government is looking for answers in the extremes of the distant past and the warnings of a hotter future. In a low-slung building at the University of Colorado at Boulder, a group of engineers and scientists have developed a cutting-edge approach to help negotiators fashion the next major deal to divvy up the dwindling river for decades to come. Despite significant rainfall in recent months, Lake Mead could return to near-historic lows by 2025. As the Bureau of Reclamation looks to reach a deal by the end of the year before a potential change in administration, the agency is, for the first time, putting climate change at the center of how it's planning the future. Those who rely on the river are now testing water-sharing strategies with the agency's new web-based tool that harnesses more than 8,000 possible futures of the river to see how policies stand up against the wild swings and uncertainties brought on by the warming climate. We ultimately get a very wide range of conditions that could happen under climate change, Rebecca Smith, a reclamation official, said during a November seminar and scientists don't expect that to be narrowing anytime soon. The force driving this innovation is a chilling one. Policymakers' recognition that the way they've forecast the river's future no longer works. By relying on records of the river's flow over the last century, the federal government and western states repeatedly underestimated the drought and failed to keep major reservoirs from nearing dangerous levels that could threaten the water supply for millions of people. Over the years, reclamation has looked to climate science to solve the real-world problem of a shrinking Colorado River, according to river experts and people involved in the effort. Even so, the deals struck with states over the past two decades to cope with the drought did not incorporate climate change models into the simulations of the river used to set long-term policy. This is changing now. Reclamation's new approach will test policies against a future informed by climate models that project warming to continue, as well as tree ring records of ancient droughts far worse than anything in the recent past, incorporating a much wider range of possible river flows than available in the recent historical record. We're teetering right on the edge here of being able to say, yep, climate change models are a part of our decision-making, said Terry Fulp, who spent three decades with Reclamation, including eight years as the Lower Colorado River Basin Regional Director until retiring in 2020. It's been a long time coming. To do this, a wonky band of government officials and academics are diving into a new world of unpredictability. Their approach is called decision-making under deep uncertainty, and it throws out the notion that anyone can predict what the future flow of the river might be a strategy that led to reclamation being in a crisis management mode, said one official not authorized to speak publicly. The most recent crisis eased about a year ago. The nation's second largest reservoir, Lake Powell, nearly dropped to the point where its hydroelectric dam could no longer produce power. It was saved by an unusually wet winter and a short-term deal with states to conserve water in exchange for billions in federal money. But scientists warned that renewed drought could quickly threaten the region again. Last year was maybe the anomaly, said Tom Bushatsk, director of the Arizona Department of Water Resources.